Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plots TV Africa. So earlier on Top Trending, we had mentioned about how EFCC boss Abdul Rashid Bawa had mentioned that a particular female minister uh, by the name of Desiani Alison Madueke had laundered money and actually paid about uh, $20 million in cash. We had it erroneously said 2 million naira, but that actually is $20 million in cash that Desiani Alison Madueke, according to Bawa, had paid you know, for that property. Yes, it's now time for Off the Press with Mr. Didi Johnson. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Anita, and good morning. Good yeah. morning, Justin. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Yeah, good morning to you. And we will kick off from the Nation the newspaper, the ban headline for this morning, uh, the EFCC. Uh, we recovered $6 billion, $261 million houses in 100 days. Uh, with the right that there are uh, rising cases of cybercrime uh, worrisome, 1,502 Yahoo boys held in six months. Above the masthead of the nation newspaper, APC awaits president not to fix convention date. Buhari orders troops to intensify Boko Haram battle. NPO calls for hold the press council bill consideration, Buhari praises Kaunda as ex-Zambian leader dies at 97. Other stories on the nation newspaper this morning, teachers, pupils abducted in Kebi, four Chinese in Ogun State. Okay, just uh, below the pictorial there, on the red strip, reps to amend NDIC Act, Nigeria earned $34.22 billion from oil and gas in 2019. And those are the stories uh, making headlines on the nation newspaper this morning. All right, moving on now to the next newspaper. Let's take a look at the Daily Independent. And the headline reads, Anambra 2021 Guba Poll. Obia not six alliance with APC as Abga crisis festers. And PDP says their unholy alliance wouldn't produce any results. Above the headline on the Daily Independent, NSAS detainee gives birth in prison. IMF says Nigeria's real GDP recovering, unemployment inflation still elevated. Also on the Daily Independent, you can't sack chief judge, court tells Governor Akiridulu. As Jusen's strike ends, EFCC storms courts with 800 litigations. Don't allow terrorists Britain space, Buhari charges troops. Airpiece aircraft to arrive Nigeria end of 2022. That's according to Onyema. Also, bandits kid attack Kebi College, kidnap scores of students and teachers. Gunmen abduct four Chinese, kill policemen in Ogun State. Now, APC governors pass vote of confidence in Buni led committee. Zambia's founding president, Kenneth Kahunda, dies at 97. Those are the stories on the Daily Independence. All right, uh, our next uh, port of call is the Pancha newspaper making banner headline this morning NBA or your Fort Buhari's Grazing Roots Gazette. Well, the writers uh, land on the state governor's control, not president, say NBA and uh, senior advocate of Nigeria. A western region created farm settlements, not cow roots. That's according to the governor of uh, your state, uh, Makin Day. Uh, beside that, uh, the must have two stories. The EFCC goes after Oji Carlo again, sleeps on Shema or Hakim, others cases. Don't give terrorists others breathing space, Buhari tells troops. Above the masthead of the Punch newspaper this morning, uh, we have some more stories there. A peak 2023 presidential candidate from the South, Shakirao, tells the APC, new electricity law underway, says Senate. Return of fuel subsidies disturbing, IMF tells federal government. Above those stories, uh, Nigeria made $34.22 billion from oil in 2019. That's according to an 80. Just below the pictorial there, bandit over power policemen kill cop abducts schools in Kebi Federal Schools. NPO stakeholders tackle reps over press regulation bill. Cholera cases rising in seven states, says NCDC. A Bomb general overseer beats wife to death over alleged infidelity. 
Gani Adams writes UN、uh, US orders over rising insecurity in Southwest. Now suspected herdsman kill police escort, kidnap four Chinese contractors. 18-year-old and SARS protester gives birth in prison custody. Those are the stories on the punch this morning. All right, let's look at the Nigerian Tribune. The headline reads: Money laundering, AFCC eyes real estate, car, jewelry businesses, uncovers newly looted six billion naira from state government. Above the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, bandits abduct teachers, students, kill policemen in Kebi, kidnap four Chinese working on Lagos Ibadan Rail, electricity reforms, federal government unveils plan to transfer equity to state, World Bank faults Nigeria's inconsistent electricity tariff policy, says country may incur three trillion naira shortfall by 2023. Zambia's founding father Kenneth Kaunda dies at 97. Presidency doesn't feel the impact of Naira devaluation. PDP governors, Ibadan violence. Makinde says we'll review park management system. Read Iwo Road of courtist. Alleged sex for Max. Akwaibom varsity sacks 14 lecturers. Stakeholders won NAS over proposed draconian law against social media. Says five million Naira fine, three years imprisonment. Too punitive. Buhari in Borno tells security chiefs to be harder on terrorists. Court stops Akira Dulu from sacking Ondo chief judge. And lastly, Oshimbajo says reps to review NSAS judicial panel reports on public brutality. All right, from the Nigerian Tribune to the Guardian, Nigerian businesses shun IPOs, raised 3.09 trillion naira via commercial papers. CP's dominance may worsen drought of new issues in stock market. Operators blame weak macroeconomy and others urge government to tackle insecurity, provide tax incentives, reduce issuance costs. Our most stories on the Guardian this morning: Nigeria ranks 146th on Global Peace Index, eighth least peaceful in Africa. Covid nineteen causes global rise in civil unrest. Violence costs fourteen point nine six trillion dollars to global economy. Could take poorest countries a decade to recover from Covid nineteen impact. All right,、uh, just beside that one, subscribers may pay more as government moves to levy airtime. And Zambia's first president dies at the age of 97.、Uh, just、uh, below the paper there on the blue strip, Abuja court stops Akiri Dulu from sacking Ondo CJ. And on the red strip, there are seven students, four teachers of federal government college, burning Yari kidnapped. A gunman abducted four Chinese, killed police officer in Ogun State. And those are the stories on the Guardian. Newspaper this morning. Okay, let's、uh, begin with those. Good morning once more, Mr. Jide Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be to be with you and、uh, to be with our viewers this morning. Fantastic. Let's start with the story. Let's start with the story of ESTC、um, and that they they recovered over six billion naira in hundred days.、Um, every time we are flooded with stories of money recovered with no accountability for the money recovered. With no justification or proof to justify the money recovered, if we take the stories we have read in the newspaper with respect to EFCCC 2015 to date, I'm sure we must have recovered over 600 billion naira in terms of recovery. Yet Nigeria is recovering money, stolen funds, and yet we are borrowing money to do projects from from pension fund from Chinese from left right to center. I don't seem to. Be able to connect the dots with EFCC claim on fund recovery from corruption and Nigeria inability to 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 get funds to 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 do projects. So we just come on the pages. We just release figures, figures that are not validated by the accountant general office, either by the Ministry of Finance or whatever. If they recover the money, who do they give the money to? Where do they return the money to? What measure of accountability? What process do we put in place? So that recovered money are not looted. So these are I'm usually taken, and then every EFCC chairman will always make reference. There is a reference point for them. Every EFCC has always made reference to designing. 
he died and Zani could make such amount of money from government there. Was she the only minister in government there? Was she the only minister? That means that a lot of people must have looted this country. So Zani has become their cash cow to use put on code for them to say they are doing they are they are they are, they are fighting they are fighting corruption or they are making recovery. Any fight against corruption without prosecution, I've said it, let APC do what is APC? Arrest, prosecute, and convict. Not only arrest and recover. Arrest, which is a prosecute and convict. Criminals and people that have looted this country. Let them do the needful. Not beyond calling press conference and telling them we cover 600 billion, we saw 200 million cash, we saw this, we saw that. There is no corresponding effect from the office of the accountant general or the auditor general or the ministry of finance. If they recover the money, I think the money should be returned back to expression then there should be coordination between EFCC, Central Bank, and the Ministry of Finance with respect to whatever. Other than that, all we just see is just fighting corruption and recovery of money on the pages of newspaper. And I've said that over and over and over again. It's evidences. Only fools argue with proofs. And evidences are, 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 are proofs. Evidence is making... All right, of, all right, of, Mr. Julia Johnson. Of uh, all right, cause uh, let's uh, quickly go to this other story um, in Kebe State. It said bandit strike abducts students and teachers. Um, we don't know just uh, the amount of students now, and teachers the, away. The, 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 we were dealing with Boko Haram in the northeast. We, we have not solved that problem. Then we moved to Eda's farmers crisis. It was the tail end of last time of the president in in play to between national axis then now we have come to the north the, the northwest has, has become the the bastion of banditry from zamfara to Kasina, Kasina to kaduna kaduna to niger niger now to kebi kebi used to be extremely peaceful we never had anything concerning that concerning kebi now schools have been when you have a system that rewards criminality when you negotiate with bandits instead of calling them terrorists. And um, this is what you have. Because it is easier to make money now when, when people are abducted and a lot of people have resorted to self-help because state institutions are filled in dealing with the issue. Let me link this story with a particular story. An NSAS protester gave back in prison, 18 year old, and 18 year old was detained in prison since last year until she gave back and she was pregnant. And here we have a system whereby you negotiate with bandits. You even see governor with their security detail talking to bandits. Those ones are not arrested. And it's a protester calling for good governance that is arrested and detained to the point that the protester gave back in prison. It tells you the, 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 the security architecture and it tells you the what and the way we, we treated criminals in this, in this particular, in this particular uh, country. Four Chinese were abducted in Ogun State. The police orderly was killed, and the four Chinese were, were abducted. And they, they want people to come and invest in your country. You must provide security. So it's there's a lot of intercourse of concern with respect to our approach towards security, our approach towards the development of our security ar ar architecture. It's me. Everybody is now resorting to self help. You want to travel now? You have to look at the security situation. Go on your knees and pray. And then hope that the roads, the roads are, are, are safe. Another story I want, I want to talk about is the NPU and stakeholder um, rejection of the backdoor draconian uh, policies in the NBC um, Amendment Act that the, the, the government is trying to pass when they face the center. One thing I tell people is, and I'll link this story as well, I'll link it with the death of Kenneth Kaunda. Uh, where Kenneth Kaunda is gone. But I'll tell you that what is later part of his life compared to the earlier part of his life. When we are growing up, Zambia was synonymous with, we thought Zambia could never exist without Kenneth Kaunda. Kenneth Kaunda with his white anchorship. Every time he goes to stadium, you know, in the 80s, and in the, in the 80s, Nigeria played Zambia a lot, in a lot of football games. In Nigeria, says they denied us in qualifying for 1986 um, Nations Cup. I, I still remember the game. Kenneth Gounder will go away to work and she everybody will wait to work and she for Kenneth Gounder. We thought Kenneth Gounder would have leave Uganda. 
he made a lot of laws, draconian laws to affect the system. But when he died, he died quietly. Quietly. We have thought that you know, Zambia will be money and everything will. So it's a lesson for those that are in power today that whatever laws they make today to stifle opposition might come to harm them in the future. Nobody owns the world forever. Nobody is forever. It's only God that lives forever. So that law, it's like some stakeholders have said, is passing the anti social bill, uh, social media bill through the back door, through the through the back, imposing fine stifle. Democracy is about openness. And I told a lot of people when government banned it, I said it's a function of censorship. Censorship versus gatekeeping. Government has no control over the flow of information except you you infringe on the right of others and um, to privacy, you infringe on their rights, and you are there are extant law that can deal with that. The law, the law of libel and slander and sedition can deal with all of this issue. You don't even need to set up a committee to be to be stifling people's access to the media space. In democracy, democracy is about access, it's about participation of the largest number of the people in the society. So let's wait and see. Um, and okay. let's wait and see, but they should be careful that whatever law they are trying to put in place, they might be the first victim of that law they are putting in place. Because nobody pays them, no party, and nobody remains in power forever. They should understand, they should understand them. All right, that Mr. Johnson. And, and, I, and I support what the stakeholders are doing, mm. and I'm speaking against, in totality, against that attempt to stifle to stifle the, the public domain and people access to the public sphere. All right, Mr. Johnson, let's cross over to the punch. Uh, their banner headline for this morning, NBA or your thoughts, Buhari's Grazing Roots Gazette. Uh, some writers there say, land under state governor's control, not president. Uh, that's uh, the NBA and the senior um, advocates are saying. How do you react to that? Uh, well, uh, probably the president still thinks that um, we, still, we are still in uh, the military regime. You know, under military regime, it's a command structure. But if you look at the um, uh, this land use decree um, of 1977, which has become a component part of, of our laws in Nigeria, which was written by the former BC of uh, a former BC of India, Professor Jalili Omotala, um, under the Basanjo administration in 1977. The exclusive right to work this land resides with the chief executive officer of the state in Abuja. It is the Minister of Federal Capital Territory. So the, the, the president does not have powers to give to give to give land to people. And like your governor said, that those were farm settlements. Farm settlements were created, not grazing road. If you if you recall, you go to the campus of federal federal uh, Lagos State Polytechnic in Korodu, it used to be a farm settlement. It's a farm settlement of, of western of western region in the past. The one we have in Okoba here, Okoba in, in where you have the, the largest abateur in, in the whole of West Africa, used to be a fast settlement of the Western region. So then I don't know why the president will be concerned about the businesses of just one subsector in the agricultural sector. One subsector, which is animal husbandry. It's not even animal husbandry, it's cow hearing. You are not talking about uh, poultry farmers, you are not even talking about. Uh, people that are into fish farming you are not even talking about about people that are into into piggy you're only talking about car it's just it's just one of the value chain even in the animal house boundary so why is the president much more bothered about people's private private business that a lot of energy is put into that and a lot of resources and a lot of states state and state um effort are put into that you put that effort into into Ikeja industrial estate into Ilukuji industrial estate into Agbara industrial estate all the companies that, if you put that effort into power generation, you know, most of the companies that have left Nigeria will stay in Nigeria. Most small and medium scale enterprise will develop. A lot of small and medium scale enterprise spend a lot of resources on power, buying diesel for their generator to power their business, which increases their overhead, which reduces their turnover and limits their capacity to, 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 to recruit more people to expand their business beyond what they are doing. So government should look at ways of improving the economy not trying to take political decisions to please some certain group or segment of, of the nation. So I agree with the NBA, the president does not have right over the land of, of uh, over the land. It's the governor that gives the right of land, this, the certificate of occupancy 
signing it belongs to the governor. So any attempt by the governor to do that, any attempt by the president to do that, we will challenge the court. And we saw what the court has done in Abuja, saying that the governor of Ondo still does not have the power to sign the judge. I thought that the Supreme Court should have done that too when the president made that attempt. Some of us said, the president does not have once once an appointment has been made, you don't have the right to sack. You can't because the judiciary becomes independent of the there are three organs of government. Look, who swears in the governor himself? The governor himself cannot become a governor until he takes an oath of office administered by the chief justice of the federation, a chief judge of the state, the state. or any, any other judge assigned to that duty by the chief judge of the state. That's what democracy interdependence between checks and balances. And the governor will now wake up to sack the person that swans him in into office. It's, 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 it's antithetical to democratic spirit. And it's not limited to those states. Some governors have done that. And until this institution, which is the institution of the judiciary, which is the institution of order, bringing about order in a chaotic democratic system, that's where you have the judiciary. And you must wake up to their responsibility. That's why I salute the courage of that judge in Abuja taking that decision. It should not be limited to those states. It should be extended to other states. We saw what happened in, in Cross River State under Ayade, where, where um, the, we've, we've seen in many cases in Imo State across Nigeria where governors will just wake up one day and they say they have sacked their, their, their chief judge as if the chief judge is their appointee. Once you have nominated a chief judge and then the 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 the, the the legislature has screened the chief judge and he has been appointed. Every other thing is left for the judicial council and not for the president or the governor to undo. So I salute that courage. And we must do that to deepen democracy. The judiciary must awake to his responsibility for us to deepen to deepen um All right, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Democracy. Yeah. All right, so still much more interesting stories uh, to look at, but I think that's the much we can take on of the press for today. Thank you very much, Mr. Gide Johnson, uh, Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian uh, Institute of Journalism. Have a great day. It's a, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, have a blessed uh, weekend. You too. Enjoy your weekend. All right, we'll take Thank a you. quick break and we'll return. Smile on your face. <laughs> oh. of the that we have. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, uh, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be looking at what happened today in history. In a moment, don't go away.